to everyone. Good evening. Uh, really nice to have you here for this uh, interesting talk on an interesting subject, by an interesting person, uh, on the foods of Bombay. The foods of Bombay. So, Dr. Aida is a young PhD scholar and a, a, a person who has actually done a PhD on the subject, not a PhD scholar, sorry, not anymore. She has done a PhD on the subject and uh, probably the first PhD on the food in, uh, in, in, in anywhere, written anywhere by any, in any university. So it's very important from the point of view of Goan history to understand what the foods are all about. And uh, Dr. Aida comes from the world of women's studies. I've had the privilege of knowing her for a long time uh, in, in Goa University where we were both students together. Impressed by her work, I think that uh, Goan women are very talented, especially when they reach the PhD level. It's not at other levels they are not talented, but at the PhD level they really sparkle and shine, and they show what they are capable of. So Dr. Aida has gone into this uh, totally, uh, you know, male-centric world of the foods and understood it. She'll tell you her story, how her father was involved in it, and many other things. I don't want to come in between you and the talk by giving a lengthy, uh, lengthy introduction. As she talks, you'll find, more, you'll find out more and more about who the person she is. I just want to add one thing, that she's very helpful, she's very knowledgeable, and uh, and she goes into areas where, you know, angels fear to tread, because uh, not many persons have done work on these subjects. So even when we asked her to help us to set up a group for Sashi Kokni, as a result of, uh, you know, some Kokni classes that we had on CLC and all that, she took the initiative and she came forward and she organized these classes very boldly. She also has her own recordings online, which if you, if you go to YouTube, you'll find them. There are many aspects to Ida. I will not go into it. Uh, all I can say is that uh, she is the best introduction to her own work. So over to you, Dr. Ida. We only one or two requests uh, in terms of housekeeping. Uh, we request all the questions be put at the end. The question is being recorded. So, uh, yeah. Will be, it will be shared on YouTube for the for the purpose of archiving. Uh, questions can be at the end, and uh, you can also at any point you can ask your questions in the chat box. If you want to ask it orally, please keep it for the end. That will be the flow of the discussion. Uh, we request everyone uh, that they put off their their mic when except the speaker. They put off their mic and their and their uh, uh, cameras. I will start by putting off my Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Frederick Norona, for that elaborative introduction about me. I'm feeling that I'm on cloud number nine. Good evening, everyone. I assume most of y'all are from India. And if y'all are if y'all are from somewhere else in the world, take my greetings as good evening from Goa. Thank you for taking time out making time for my presentation that has been hosted by a collaborative cafe. At the outset, I would like to thank Father, Reverend Father Mervyn D'Souza, the director of the Goa, Jesuits of Goa province and CLC. A big thank you to Mr. Savio Dias and Dr. Frederick Norona. Both of them are the collaborators of the Collaborative Learning Cafe. In this presentation, it's going to be a short, informal one where I'm going to be speaking about my study about the foods. In short, I will be briefing all about how this research has been on what I have researched on and what are my findings so far. Can the slides be seen by everyone? Yes, yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Dr. Aida, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, one second, now it's gone off. Just a request to everyone to put off their cameras, if you don't mind, except the speaker. And uh, yeah, the slides are fine. Right? It's coming, it's coming. Yeah. Yes. So the topic of my presentation today is 
holds the lifeline of the Goans. Now, if one passes by the metropolitan city of Mumbai, Dobithala, one can see another mini Goa there. Why do I see this? I say this is because I have witnessed it myself in journeying through the Kuts when I was researching about them. This is a very unique system of community living called as a Kut system, which was started way back by our ancestors. And this particular system started because of the migration when our men folk, even our women, when they migrated in search of job during the Portuguese period. The, this word kud was conceived in my mind as a small child. Why do I say a small school going girl is that is a time and dad would come after nine months after his voyage. He worked on a merchant navy ship as a cook first and later just before his retirement he was promoted to a chef. The last ship that he sailed on was Sea Princess London. He was working on piano cruise liners. And he would tell us when he, he came back after nine months stories about how he put up in the coup and he how he had difficulties, how he would put up in the coup for various reasons. So that is how this concept about food was there in my mind. But as I grew up, it instigated the researcher in me and thus started my long dreamt voyage on this particular topic called the food system. Now my study site was Jair Mahal, which is situated in Dubitalong, Bombay, Mumbai. I would love to say Bombay because from the respondent uh, answers that have been given to me, they have told me when the food started is of Bombay and I feel comfortable for, for unknown reasons to say Bombay rather than Mumbai. This particular estate houses 22 foods altogether, both from the north as well as the south of Goa. It is recognized also as a heritage site. It was built by the Britishers in the year 1904. Later on, it was being purchased by the Tarakurwala Parsi owner. 15 years ago, it has been purchased by Rohan builders. Now from these 22 courts, I have done a detailed study of six courts, which are all from Salset. So village of Nove, village of Raya, Fatrane, Shishini, Majorda, and Makazan. I have done a detailed study of the six schools that I just mentioned, showing you the map of Salset. But seen, observed, and interviewed many other food respondents of the schools situated in and around Dubitala. Some of the pictures you can see, I have gone myself and clicked. These pictures are all clicked by me. Some of which are under tenancy, and others which are under private ownership. Here, these are under private ownership. The, the one at Matar Pakadi, the Deusa Kur, are under private ownership. They have purchased it. So they are not under tenancy anymore. There are some others, which I don't have much pictures here. They have been gifted to our Goans who worked in the Anglo-Indian homes. Interviews with them revealed that they all had similar functioning. And the only difference was that they belonged to different villages of Goa each having the name of their patron saint or of the village. Now the six schools that I have done a study on is the Majorda Kur, then we have the Raya Kur, called as Sakra Familia, that's their patron. Then we have the Nuvain Kur, Mindesh Pobris, Alidia Mindesh Pobris is the patron of this school. Then we have the Shishini Kur. This Kur is named after the village. Durga is a village in Shishini. The Fatrade Kur doesn't have any patron and I did not get much details because the respondents were not that, uh, what do I say? They, they have suffered quite a lot from real estate. So they were not very receptive to my question. They did not respond to my questions. And this is of the Makazana Kur, the patron saint is Saint Francis Xavier. So these are the six schools that have done a very detailed study on. Now, what is the meaning of a kur? The poster designed by Collaborative Learning Cafe has rightly explained the meaning of a kur, which has been also called as clubs by most of them. They are dormitory styled. These schools or clubs were established as the need was felt by the Goan migrants who migrated to the neighboring metropolitan cities. And one of them was Bombay. The word kur, a company term for room, is a kuda oida, ruma oida. So it was a company term for a room 
brought economic and social stability and that is how I meant to say foods were a lifeline to the goals. So it provided economic as well as social stability to many homes and their families in Goa. Due to which, due to this system, males managed to cross, cross the great seas due to the origin of the system. One example was my dad. He managed to work on the piano cruise liners, putting, up, putting himself up in the kud because he would wait for a call from the company he used to tell us to get onto the kud because the shipping company office was very close to the kud. So he had to be there ever present, ever ready to join back anytime there the company calls him. So that's the reason I say if they managed to cross the great seas due to the origin of the system, the food system. Goa is comprised of many talukas and different villages. Each of these villages are different in different parts of Mumbai, represented in the village foods, especially places in and around Dubitalam, of which I've, I've shown some of the slides and shown some of the foods to you. This I state as each of the villages has their own food named either after their village or patron saint of their village. There was this mass exodus. People were migrating in large numbers. One reason was when these few migrants who lived in the Kur and when they came down for maybe some vacation or for some reason to Bombay, this, the other neighbors, the male members, or even the mothers or the sisters or their wives saw that they were excelling. In what sense the respondents told me they could manage to buy a two-wheeler or bicycle, start building a bigger house than usual. So they thought these people are doing quite well, which was yes by many of the respondents. So they also thought of migrating to Bombay. And during the Portuguese period, the Portuguese did not do anything to stop this migration, basically because the government treasury was actually benefiting. There were these two taxes that were imposed on them. One tax was imposed on Goans who knew Portuguese and migrated out of Goa, and the others who migrated out of Goa. So there were these two taxes. So. Uh, the Portuguese did not do anything to stop this migration. Those who migrated were looking out for cheap accommodation and thus this food came to their rescue because they were economically very cheap. Now it is 350 uh, a month for the members and for the visitors it is 500. So within a month if you pay 500 any other time you can come and stay in the food. That, that, that makes up for the entire month. So in that sense even till today if it is in 2022, if it is 500 a month in a metropolitan city of Mumbai, if it is so cheap, I find uh, finding accommodation in Bombay is very reasonable, unlike the hotels that people tend to put up. One more thing I would like to tell you, when they started migrating in large numbers, they lived in Gir uh, Kavel in Girgaon. They did not have village schools. All of them lived in one food under one roof. But as I told you, they seeing other people in the village excelling economically, excelling socially, they also migrated. So the demand for accommodation in the pool was more. And that is the time they broke up into village schools. Now, what is the system? I don't think you will be able to read this, but I put up one letter. There's a, there's a requirement for you to be writing a letter. So the letter has to be addressed to the manager or to the managing committee. Here, this letter is addressed to the president, manager, and the members. So this is this person, Francis Fernandez from the Major Dakur, uh, dated 1983, is requesting that he be made a member. He's writing that he will abide by the rules and regulations. These are the three things that they, most of the letters, the 412 letters that have uh, managed to get across and read them. They, they, they promise that they will abide by the rules. They promise that they will help in the cleaning of the food and they will respect the elders. Another thing is other than writing the letters, you have to have two witnesses or people recommending you to the food of your village in Bombay. So those two people have, they have the, on the letter, they are there down. If you can see one is Salvador Pereira and the other one is Minino Pereira. They have signed to show that these, this particular Mr. Francis has been recommended by them. And this is also a proof to show that this boy is from that or this man is from that particular village. Other than this, other letters show that you needed a birth certificate produced at the time of your uh, let, uh, admission to the court with regard to the church birth certificate. You had to produce it there. So once this letter is addressed, addressed to the managing committee, this is the managing committee as well as the members of the Major Dakur, I put it across to you. Once this letter is addressed, this letter and other things which have been addressed 
are actually being put across in the meetings that are held after the rosary. So things like new members application, letters, disobedience by any member, like drinking, coming home late in the court, not giving, uh, not uh, excusing themselves prior, mischief by any members, not uh, 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 sorry, refusing to do any celebration because every year there is a president for a particular, uh, for the feast. So it is being told prior or any other major problems have been discussed in these meetings and that is only done after the rosary with whoever is present for that day in the food. But otherwise, this meeting is for discussing discussing day-to-day -day activities. But other than that, there are other meetings like the annual general body meeting that takes place in a year and there are monthly meetings also. I just forgot to tell you, you are not directly made a member. I just go back to the previous slide. You are directly not made a member on the letter that is written to the managing committee to address to the president or the members. On that letter, a remark is made, accepted on probation. Accepted on probation on 31 July, 1983, the date when the, the person, Mr. Francis Fernandez had written the letter. So he's kept on probation for a period of six months and he's under observation by the members or by the managing committee, whoever is there, either the manager or the president or the secretary, if he's there in the food at that time, he's kept under observation. It's his behavior, his reporting time, his obedience, his, his uh, he had uh, said that he will abide by the rules. If all that happens, then he's given a permanent membership. Things like accepted, things like okay, maybe accepted, all these remarks were made on the letters that had uh, recourse to. Now there are certain rules that they had to abide by once they become permanent members. Once you get permanent membership, there are different rules one had to abide, such as return back to the court before seven. You had to be present for the rosary. You had to put off, you had to be present for the angelus. You had to put off lights by 10 a.m. But I have been told by two who's out of the six that have done a detailed study that there are many times there were students who used to be members here in the pool. They were allowed to be in the kitchen and uh, they, they were allowed to use the kitchen lights for their late night studies. No one was allowed to sleep after 7 a.m. until unless they were sick. They had to fill water. They were, they were given turns to fill water. And if anyone disobeyed, then there were various kinds of punishments that were given to them, such as after rosary, they were made to say one and a half, our father and three Hail Marys kneeling down. Or they were denied access to the food for that particular day. Nothing is being told to me, where do they go? So the number of members initially were as much as 60 and 80 as of now, as on 2nd October 2022, minus the visitors, minus the members who traveled there to celebrate the feast. There were only 10 members, including the visitors who are putting up in the food, two for some studies, three are working there in and around Bombay. So it was only 10 of them. So compared to 60 and 80, now it is only 10 in the Majorda food. Once you get into the permanent membership, each of the courts have a uh, register. Most of it consists of, majority of court consists of 450 pages. Here, maybe because they have got 600 permanent members now. Uh, this is of the Nove Club or the Nove, Nove Karis Club. It has got 350 pages. Each member has got a number and it has been registered. It has been entered as per the number, the name, the society towards which they are paying the money. Like example, earlier they had the death benefit society, which doesn't exist in any of the courts that I've researched, but still continues to be operational only in my Majorda court, where they pay a certain amount of money that I will talk to you later in the presentation. So here the details have been maintained. This speaks about the management or the maintenance of the court. So here the new members enrollment, they have a particular number and it consists of 350 pages. For Majorda code, it is 450. For uh, Makazana, it is 250. Now they have an accountant, which is not of the code, but previously, when I went through the registers, they had accountant 
from the village food itself. So that generated a job for an accountant. So he would migrate and put up in the food. This is an accountant from the Benauling Club, but does accounting and auditing of the other foods in and around in the Jair Mahal estate. Now these are records that have been maintained. This is the receipt that I put across to you all. This is what they pay with regard to the association that they have registered as a safety measure. I will come to it later. This is an, uh, a receipt of income and expenditure of the year 1978. Recent one I couldn't find it. That's why I put up 1978. The maintenance of records has been shown very well here. They, this is of the Majordakur. It is written in Kongani. It shows here Moenans on their space. So monthly expenditure has been shown. So they show the records, sorry, they show the records, how it is done month-wise. And finally, they have also annual records maintained in their registers. So they have different registers for the visitors, for their permanent membership, for their death, death benefit records. So they have different, different registers that runs into pages. Now, once you are a permanent member, you have to cook for yourself now, earlier, I told you there were around 80, 60 members. So they had a cook and that cook was brought in from the villages of Goa. He would put up in the coup, take orders from the 60, 50, 80 members for breakfast, lunch, and maybe for dinner. So it was on catering on a larger scale. There were two cooks I've found on one register where it shows that there is a revenue stamp being stuck by the cook and he has signed against the receiving of, the, of his fee. So here the code also provided employment in the form of a village cook. So here now they cook for themselves. So now when they cook for themselves, they whatever items they purchase out of their money, they have to label it. They have to write their name so as to no one else uses it. And on every Sunday, be it a visitor or a Catholic, after the mass, they have to help in the cleaning of the pool. Now I would like to show you about how the foods actually function. Here is a, a rosary. Okay, and this is our lady being brought into the food and how they conduct the litany. Here people have come, the females who you see, one of them is we have flown from Goa to witness a celebration in Mumbai, in the food. How the celebrations are being done in Goa, the same way it takes place in the Kool. When there is a feast that will be celebrated, or All Lady celebration, most of them even come because this All Lady celebration is told well in advance. Unlike the Angelus, whoever is present, they, they come for the Angelus. Whoever is present for the Rosary, they come for. But unlike the All Lady celebration, they come to know one year prior. Uh, uh, feast celebration, they come to know one year prior. So it's it's, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of preparation that goes in. Now here I will I will uh, play a video about the litany that was done on the feast day on second October 2022 of the Majorda Kur.
next one is of the same day, but this is after the litany is over and they are wishing each other. Now I will show you all another feast video of the Makazana Kud. This was previous two videos of the Majorda Kud that I witnessed recently on 2nd October 2022. And this Makazana Kud celebration of the feast was, took place on 4th, 12th, 20, 2016. <laughs> Now this is what exactly I'm going to narrate to you, how through the letters, the Kur were a lifeline of the Goans. I had an access to many documents and I had my field trips to the Jair Mahal. These letters dated back from 1954 to 1986. They are mostly written in Roman Konkani. Very few were in English and most of them were handwritten. They were all written by husbands, sons, wives, sisters, mothers of Catholic origin, as the names are all Catholic sounding names, addressed either to the court manager or the president or in general it was managing committee. As there's only one from the Majorda Kool, that is a Goan Hindu by the surname Lothikar, but otherwise most of all of them were coming from the Catholic. As on all the letters, there were remarks whether to be accepted to join as a member or not. And this letter too had a remark stating that accepted as I had told you all earlier. Of the 113 letters got from the Kur, 48 of the letters were written by women who were either wives, sisters or mothers of the members of the Kur. Now let us understand through the letters how they meant a lifeline to the goons. Through the letters, I narrate the story. That's me 
and that's the majorda court and there are lots of documents that i have referred still many more that can be referred for further research so here the first story i would like to tell you to tell you that it was a lifeline to the goans's families were economically terribly dependent on the court only two letters i've cited to show you the economic dependence one letter stated that her husband used to pay a regular death call that is a death benefit society i was telling you and the present manager tells me that this death benefit society was started because men were living alone in the court when they were stressed and all they used to drink a lot so whatever little they would earn there they would wasted on alcohol so for them to save some amount of money this death benefit society was being opened there there's bomb out society also like how we have we deposit money in the bank like these these two societies are still functional in this majorda court and even in the makazana court it is there but death benefit society is nowhere there as i told it's only there in the majorda court so this lady writes and says could whether his money whatever he is to pay could it be sent for his funeral and other funeral formalities there's another letter stating that to send some amount of money that was written in konkani i've written the translation please send me some amount of money i will pray to god almighty understand my case and put something in my begging bowl she said mugale maka kithe ismol dada ismol dada me kithe put something in my begging bowl so that shows a total economic dependence by the court members by the court family so rightly it can be pointed out that the court were were a lifeline to the goals urgency of putting up in the court i have told you many letters i have come across and they were spanning from a period of 1954 to 1986 over a period of 32 years and there were around 200 letters for permanent membership and i have highlighted this in red because these letters whatever was there on their uh, letters were all underlined in red pencil color they promised that they will obey all the rules of the club will sweep the club on sundays and respect elders in the pool so the minute they write it dr frederick is there some problem i was just requesting everyone to put their mic for the Yeah. So I continue. You know, urgency of putting up in the court states from those letters I told you, and once they underline in red, means it shows the urgency of the person, the need of the person to put up in the court. Maybe to look out for a job, to get onto the ship, to work in and around Dobitala, or in Mumbai. When they write letters, I have got a letter here. Out of those many letters, only few I could put it on my slides. And this letter is written in Konkani. I have put put the translation for you all. When they write to the managing committee, they have asked for some financial support. And once they get it, they have acknowledged it. I am very grateful to the managing committee for putting something in my begging bowl and coming to my rescue in times of distress. This letter is quite touching because once you know someone has thanked the managing committee or the members of the court, that shows that they have really come to their rescue. That it, the court has really provided the financial support. Now these courts have been under threat. That's all I could show you all with regard to the letters. It runs into many many. Uh, uh, slides, but I cannot show because I have been given only one, and I, I would like to stop it by then. These courts are under threat. So there, this Federation of Goan Courts, which started, it was already there right from the year 1938, but it was not functional. So now they revived it back, and they started it in 2009. I had witnessed this 10th annual general body meeting on 19th of November 2019. This is the office that is housed again in Jair Mahal Estate, and this meeting again because of the bigger premises of the court of the Majorda court, they have they have had the meeting there. Now the members who have registered under the Federation of Goan Courts they come and put forth their problems towards the annual annual general body meeting. Any any problems they have, there are many cases that have been put in the court, so they help them to fight those court cases. any other query that they would like to be helped 
so they sought out in this particular on this particular forum so they put across to the federation of the goan tools and they have a managing committee that that tries to help them out they, they, they not help them out totally but some way or the other they try to help them out there are around 80 tools that have been registered under the federation of the goan tool as told by the treasurer of the goan tool that is mr henry fernandez of the ponda group so here we have the session or the sorry the meeting going on and we have the managing committee we have the treasurer the president the, the treasurer and the secretary there and that's me whom you all can see in the picture there's another thing that has come to the rescue of this course who are under threat nowadays that now the societies act of 1860 many of the course have registered themselves under the societies act of 19, 1860 why they have done so is because they would they would not call it as a coup. Everyone would call it as a club. So the Maharashtra government had a problem. They said in a club only gambling activities take place. So such coup shouldn't be allowed to continue. So when such a such kind of a news was going around, they felt threatened by it. So they registered themselves under this Societies Act of 1860. Now what has impacted the coup? This is what I want to tell you. Direct tickets from Goa, earlier they would not get people who would sail on the ship. They would not get direct tickets. They had to go to Mumbai, put up in the Kur, and they would get, uh, when once they finished their voyage, they had to get off in Mumbai, uh, get into the Kur for some days. Their family would also come there. They would shop for some days. The family, the wife, and the children would put up in the visitor's school. So there was some kind of life, there was some kind of vibrancy that was maintained by this, when they would be uh, allowed to be stopping their voyage still Bombay. So there are direct tickets. Visas were made, are made available online. Earlier to stamp your visa, you had to come to Bombay, which means you had to get into the pool. Growth of five-star hotels. So hotels, five-star hotels have come up in Goa, which has been a biggest threat to the survival of the pool system. Why I say this is because earlier, there were no five-star hotels or boys who were keen or eager in going on the ships to take their experience. They would work in the five-star hotels to gain experience but now since it is there in Goa so there's no need for them to go to Bombay live in the pools earlier there was a policy sorry for that spelling mistake there earlier there was a policy that in Maharashtra the father worked in a particular industry the son would also take up the job when the father dies or father retires but that is no more there so that that means earlier when they would live in the pool they would work from the pool so the son or the father would be there Father would go to Goa and then the son would continue living in the good and working in the factories and the industries in Bombay. In different attitude of the good members, like we say, Makita Bodan, that is the kind of attitude that has developed among the good members. Then delay in payment of the rents. If you do not they pay your annual rent, which means there is a chance that you give the builders to take off the good from you. So you are no more a tenant, those who are there under tenancy. Not the, I'm not talking about the individual ownership one. Most of them are on the tenancy. So if you delay the payment of rent, normally the delaying of the payment of rent happens when, I'll tell you. When people, members do not take interest in paying their monthly rents. So from where will the funds come? So thereby the managing committee delays in paying of the rents. So when you delay the payment of the rents, the code goes from you and it is taken over by the landlords. Then the land sharks or the real estate. When the code, which is not being used, many codes are under lock and key. There have been cases where the code has been taken over by the land sharks, putting allegation. One example, you all might have read about the Ben Auling code, about the German bakery case. They, that allegation was being put. It was taken over, but they fought the case and one, one room, I think, or one part of the, the building has been given over to the Ben Auling code now. So the land sharks are just waiting. The code has not been used, like how it is happening in Goa. I don't have to detail about it. Once no one is there occupying that particular land, it is taken over to some way or the other. So like that, when land sharks come to know that no one occupies, there are no members coming there, that the, the, the food is under lock and key, they try to find out these loopholes and make use of it. Now, what are the ways to maintain it for posterity? Being a common, common goal-oriented per, per, person, try to think of it that the ancestor had started, you have used it, your sons are using it, or your family is using it, by using the visitor's room. Keep inside the common goal. Don't be selfish, be selfless. United we stand, divided we fall. 
if we have the concept or if we have the attitude makki da bola muge ki to eta what goes off mind if we have that attitude then yes we will not see fools anymore then go government's intervention can play a big major role why do i say that is i say that because many of the courts other than the 22 courts in the jermal district the courts in and around dobitala there are different village courts and in all these village courts the konkani is there the kind of food that we the feast are celebrated some in a small way some in a very very on a large scale so when goa exists there why not goa government intervenes why why can't why can't we you know encourage goa government so goa government's intervention in terms of financial support they require a lot of financial support for their maintenance they require lots like for example majorta kur spends 40287 annually as their fee to the rohan builders so once when it is such a big amount i think financial support from the goa government will mean a lot to the survival of the kur the next one is from my experience celebration in the kurs as earlier many people would be going there this uh, festive feast that happened on 2nd of october 2022 there were many people you all might have seen it in the video because of the pandemic they couldn't celebrate it but they were just waiting for this pandemic to die down so that they could all go so i also took an opportunity but i never knew they would be felicitating me so i could witness people from goa migrated there uh, travel to to celebrate the feast people from in and around the different courts came to witness the food so when celebrations the food are there it keeps that vibrancy it, i mean brings back the food to life there is sort of such a lot of activity that takes place and you tend to identify yourself you feel very nostalgic from this respondent uh, narrations i've been telling it to you all the courts should keep visitors not many of them keep or you two have been keeping so when you keep visitors it gives you the fun it keeps the food alive and going so there's no chance for land sharks popping their nose or no finance so rent is being paid continuously paying the rents on time to the landlords will keep our courts for posterity thank you and long live our goan courts thank you thank you so much dr aida for that uh, for that short yet very elaborate uh, presentation on the food uh, dr aida has been working on this uh, subject i don't know for how many years at least for 4 5 or 6 years possibly she is not 8 8 fn 8, eight, 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 eight. <laughs> so she is so close to the issue that uh, she has all the details with her and for us people who have not encountered the food uh, you know so well we are wondering where does it fit in and things like that okay uh there have been studies done at a at a lower level you know masters level masters dissertation i think by hc patrika or some yeah olga olga valadare sorry olga valadare has done in the 50s and she made some very interesting points that the food help people help people from goa to get access to low cost accommodation they save 30% of their income which they put into sports and education which are which has them to come to come up in life so having said that it's a very important aspect to understand these small uh, you know nitty gritties of goan life goan migration goan history which uh, we don't uh, know so much of so i'll leave it open to anyone who wants to ask questions there are some in the chat box of kaida you are getting some compliments already quite a few <laughs> but uh, people are appreciating your work uh, anivia master in it was very interesting talk and being good in it is appreciating so nuala perera Uh, anyone who wants to ask or either orally or on in the chat i think louis godino has asked uh, one of your students wants to know has the majorda food records of guests going back to 1921 can you repeat that question okay. dr frederick for me okay okay so louis godino is asking Whether the Majorda food, I'm sure Louis is from Majorda himself. I know he's from Majorda. He's based in the UK, so he wants to know whether they have records going back to 1921. Yes, Louis, they have lots of it, and I showed you. I am sitting there at the altar where all the documents have been stacked up, and that's another area when one can research on. For lack of time, I couldn't do others, but uh, maybe in the post-doctorate, 
I might take it up if time permits and age permits. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Doctor. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice to digitalize all those records and keep them for future references, but it'll cost a lot of money. I know you're doing a wonderful job. I appreciate that. Was it difficult for my side, doctor? Was it difficult to access this uh, male-oriented world where, you know, it was a wholly male world? I, I don't think there are codes for women in that sense. So what there, were codes, there were codes, Frederick, but uh, they have stopped functioning for reasons unknown to me. I have also clicked pictures of the buildings that the women's codes were there, but they are not functional anymore. So what were the difficulties you faced when accessing them? First, was it a matter of trust? Yeah, I'll tell you one example. When I went for an annual general body meeting, I had taken prior permission. They told, this is of men. So I had carried my ID card. So that person told me, now he's in touch with me. He's very good to me, saying that we have done a very wonderful job. But there it was, I, I literally cried. And he said, you come. You should come with a letter from the chief minister saying that you are doing a research on the Kurs. In other words, Another you should not be there. In other words, you should not be there at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it now, they, now they are feeling very good that they have been put up somewhere that people know that foods are existing and that is what they are doing and then the other issue that came up during the many discussions online is also about the foods in other parts apart from Bombay can you tell us a little bit about that can, can you repeat the question again Frederick foods, foods outside Bombay foods outside, of foods, Bombay. Foods outside Bombay I have not done a in Pune, in Belgaum. I've just done a sweeping study just to find out about, about the functioning and other things I've not done. Karachi also someone mentioned, no? Karachi. Yeah, Karachi also. I've related to the clubs that existed in uh, East Africa and said, I have shown the difference in my research, how they were different from the foods that are housed in, uh, in and around Bombay. Then of course there is the elephant in the room that uh the problem areas of the food, to be honest. One is that uh, it was only a Catholic thing, by and large, with a few exceptions, as you pointed out. Secondly, uh, there was the element of caste also involved no, in that sense. So what's your comment on both these issues? Yeah, caste system has still been, uh, it's there. Like, I'll take example, Varka code has got two, two foods. One is of a higher caste, and one is of the lower caste. Even in one of the courts, that is a majorda court, they observe caste system, but now it is not so, as been told. Because once they would come down to celebrate various feasts, they would not be allowed to take part in those. Like for Good Friday, the lower caste people were not allowed. So in that way, caste system is still existing. It's still been used in the courts. That's an interesting subject because in some cases, the caste has got eroded by migration. And in other areas, it has got strengthened by migration. If you look at East Africa clubs also, they seem to be having a problem area there, a huge problem, because it has actually strengthened the, the caste biases maybe more than they had in Goa in that sense, you know, whatever. And, and uh, as far as uh, non-Christians uh, participating, uh, like, you know. In yeah, now I told you there are more visitors who are non-Catholics rather than Catholic as visitors. So if I had to show you the statistics, which I did not put, it is like if there are 40 visitors, there will be only five members of that particular court who are Catholics. They come there to do their studies, to answer exams, to get promotions on these ships. So, but then there is no discrimination there. Although it was only started for Goan Catholics. Doctor, either there is some of, uh, some comments in the, in the chat. And Alti has raised the hand. Alti Montoro, please go ahead. You can unmute yourself and talk. Doctor, either if you want to read the chat also, you'll find some uh, some comments if you can uh, respond to. Alti, come in. For those who don't know, in the meanwhile, engineer Alti Montero is uh, based in Pune and he's written a book on the Badestas of uh, Goa, that is the migrants who went north, not who didn't go south to Nanglo and uh, coastal Karnataka, but who went north. The areas of, uh, of yeah, Joseph has a question, or I don't know whether it's just a comment. He says that uh, 
poaching is actually harassed a smaller part of the goan community i have been told if they wanted to migrate even from goa to bombay they had to have a passport so that was like a harassment so i would agree with joseph fernandes there was some tax also no out migration tax or something yeah i told you all two taxes once uh, on those people who were poaching and migrated, migrated to to bombay and those who migrated for job prospects or for any other reason to bombay so those two taxes they did not do anything because it was like a government uh, pre, uh, it was financed to the government treasury anjini arshi come in come in say arshi go ahead arshi we cannot hear you you are on mute probably i can see yeah he is on mute Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Dr. Ida. Uh, first, I want to know whether there are or there were any Hindu courts here of uh, Goans in Bombay. Uh, that I want to know. And secondly, in Pune, uh, uh, just I am studying that topic as per your earlier suggestion. Uh, I recorded there are twelve. There were twelve courts. But now only three courts are in function in Pune, and the court of Saint Anne's of Parra is in existence from 1865. Yeah, this much I can say. That's it. Yeah. Okay. There are no uh, courts uh, from the Hindu community, Goan Hindu community. Okay. And the second. and secondly i would like to say a big thank you for providing me this information one day in my life at least i will come to see those three courts and especially yeah. saint anne's court of that dates back to 1865 yeah surely you are most welcome yeah thanks for otherwise also yeah. you have been updating me about the courts yeah thank you so much yeah welcome before you are log out i would like to say a big thank you god bless you no i'm not logging out i'm saying thanks to all of them because more, some of them i have finished the presentation they are logging out so i would like to say a big thank you to all of you for taking time out making time for me and seeing my presentation hearing me and asking me questions god bless you and god bless our coaches yes dr frederick thank you for making time for us but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know i responding to uh, engineer See the the Hindu migration to Bombay was as strong as the Catholic migration in this particular period, large numbers. Uh, maybe the style of organization was different. Uh, they had the Goa Hindu Association and other groups. It was quite a wide yeah. organization. It's still there online and things like that. Online, offline. They do a lot of yeah. activities. But maybe this residential thing, I don't know where it came about. Anything about the history of what inspired the courts or what is the origin of it? What inspired the court system? You're saying. Yeah. they just wanted to have that community identity village identity so they started i told you they lived in kavel girgaon all together all the different village members but later on as the demand for the kood grew so they broke up into village kood either named them after the patron saint or the name of the village there is a elaborate list of kood in uh, in the book uh, in that uh, in an unpublished book by jd pinto who is the grandfather of shirley gonzales i think shirley is in our meeting here Uh, great grandfather so he has written a unpublished thesis which has a list of all the foods probably dating back to 60 62 or 61 or before that and there are all so how could i have an access to that book uh, dr frederick contact shirley uh, the unpublished thesis shirley will be quite happy to give it to you i'll give you a contact i'll give you a contact yeah please please carry on anyone who wants to come in can please comment this is the last chance because uh, dr ida is threatening to leave and go for some other program so last question one or two please hello he has any question since you are from the majorda code and most of it are projected do you have the majorda code today uh, uh dr ida i would have but i won't like to take much time the thing is that uh, i would be keen actually to find someone to uh, digitalize all those records it would be fantastic those large books registers it is important to record that for future uh, references and uh, i might like to trace my grandfather i think he must have passed around 1921 that's the reason i asked 
because my granddad died in 1922 in South Africa, Durban. He was working on a British ship. Uh, he fell ill at Durban of malaria, admitted to hospital, and uh, passed away of malaria. So I did a lot of research tracking his history, uh, found his graveyard, and uh, I would like to actually find somebody who could maybe help me out, check with Majora Kud if they have any records. He most yeah, probably, did, did he, did he, he put up in the Kud, Louis, in the Majorda Kud? Uh, 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 it's just my gut feeling, because in those days, I mean, uh, you know, people used to travel to Bombay, uh, ensure the in time they wait for the time to board the ship, you know, the, all that process. And uh, right. uh, it's just my hunch that you could have spent a few days there. It'd be nice to get in touch with the management there. If I could, you could pass me privately later the contact number. Uh, I would like to get in dialogue with him. And if there are records, I would like photocopies of them. Because um, I built a pretty good uh, story of my granddad's uh, voyages, his trip, the ship name. The ship actually eventually was torpedoed uh, somewhere in South America during the Second World War. And uh, it was very interesting because this same type of ship where they had half cargo and half passenger, like the one we talked about a while. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mas, uh, Merwin Marcel lost his parents off uh, Seychelles. You know, you know, those are, were the first type of ships that were going mixed, mixed cargo and passengers. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that would be a nice missing link for me between Goa, the ship, and Bombay. My, tracking my granddad's movement. Yeah. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Just, uh, yes, yes, Doctor Frederick. Just Renika, Renika, Renika Barneto has made a point that Nakeya Pumpasar showed the food. Otherwise, we have to imagine what it was like living there after listening to elders who stayed there. Interesting point. I think uh, Francisca Mesquita has raised a hand. Can you give her a chance? And uh, just to acknowledge the presence of Frankie Gracious, who wrote a nice article on Doctor. Dr. Aida's research and which he said, uh, yeah, he's reading out to us. Uh, we are you at work, Frankie, or at home? Uh, he, he wrote for the Government of Times, which has a uh, digital edition. And uh, thanks for that, Frankie. Doctor, Dr. Francisca, Mesquita, please. Uh, good, evening. good evening, everyone. I am not uh, quite well, so I, I have only put on the microphone. So, you know, when, when we were small, my grandfather and uncle used to live in the Divar Kur. And every 1st January, there used to be a celebration and a nice dance with nice uh, what is that, snacks and all that. And especially, um, we used to enjoy all going there for that da dance. So that's why I took part in this discussion. So I uh, got those memories when we were small. We used to travel all the way by train and go to the Kud, Jair Mahal. Without doubt, without doubt, without doubt this, this, this is an important part of our history and so important that uh, so nice that all of you all are bringing it together. Is to wear our best dresses and go there. No, maybe 1968, 69. <coughs> Frankie Gracious is a Bomaikar also, so he has taken extra interest in writing that article. Thank you, Mr. Tony Monmare. You're on mute, you're on mute. You're on mute, Frankie. Can you, uh, can you hear me now? I have vivid memories of uh, going to our club, which is the Kanakana Club. I remember it was a tradition with my father to take me and my brother Albert. We used to go there every Sunday to the club. My father was never a member of the club. Uh, I think he was a member, but he never lived there. He used to go there, he used to meet. He used to have this kind of. Uh, my father always wanted to meet somebody or the other from his village. Uh, my father used to work as a foreman for BST company, and we used to stay in a government quarters in Parel. I was born and brought up in Bombay. I was born in KM Hospital. So uh, I used to go with my father, and then the other tradition was either go to Bastani or Kiani, very close by, to have the Irani chai. The taste is still lingering in my mouth. And I used to never come out of the place without having 
the pudding there and the keema there that was my favorite yeah so there are lots of memories our club is still existing and uh, of course i don't think our club is in the jar mahal building it's in some other building where the jv school is close by ida must be knowing it better where our club is some of them i've visited and i've already shown in the presentation in and around dobita long i've seen the baikula one the dockyard road one proper yeah. market chira bazaar absolutely absolutely yeah, many I, when I, of them yeah when i did the story i somehow managed to get uh, through my cousin's husband the pictures of the sarzora club and because i needed some more pictures to go with my story so i managed to somehow get those pictures and it was it was nice i really enjoyed doing the story really enjoyed reading your uh, i mean all your research that you have done and uh, just wanted to know what exactly are you trying to do with all that what you have gathered now i had basically five objectives when i set out doing this research we say it is men's kood so i wanted to show although women were not present in the kood how they are there invisibly like many things that are there the nachna powder powder the local lakes then the sausages that are handmade the pickle the para yeah. the mango pickle everything is been sent by the ladies from here either the mother the sister no, the wife. so how can you totally say it's the men's school so yeah. through my research i found that women still play a major role another objective that i wanted to find out is how this cultural extension takes place okay um, so tell me according to you now presently how many such groups are existing around 130 uh, according to me i think there are around 130 of them in that area that where in jermahal estate itself i told you 22 no, jermahal jermahal is one one of the main buildings and around surrounding the place there are many of them but they are not as vibrant as they told me as earlier so that's basically because of the problems that i cited not many members come into the kuls they don't require to be coming into the kul except the elders who were there earlier and have retired and living in goa they come to celebrate feast or maybe our lady or maybe to pay the rent other they all pay the bills other than yeah. that uh, not many like in the raya kul there's no one there now in the shishini kul dura club of shishini that's how in housed in jermal no one is there but in the majorda kul at present there are 10 people who are living including the visitors Yeah, yeah. Okay. Permit me, permit me to step in and just read two or three representative comments. Uh, one is from Clifford De Silva, which says that uh, very painstaking research must have been a huge challenge. So thoughtful of you to think of this topic, and being a woman among so many men must have raised suspicion initially. At out at least discussed. Well done, Dr. Ida. And uh, Gideo Montero says it brought back nostalgic memories of my visit to the school. In the 60s and 70s, addresses from São Paulo, Brazil, and uh, Rovina K. Mascarenhas is asking the question: Did how recently did Jair Mahal have food residents? What is the last part of the question? Did how recently did Jair Mahal have food residents? Yeah, I think she logged in after the presentation. Have just shown a video, Rovina. About the celebration of the Majorda Kur, the feast, the patron feast that took place that takes place every first Sunday of October. So this time it took place on second of October, twenty twenty-two. The day that same day they took an opportunity to felicitate me, which they couldn't do all these years because of the pandemic. So that's my answer till date. The Kur residents are very much there; it's quite active and alive in that way. This is Jair Mahal. This is Jair Mahal. Yes, yes, Jair Mahal, on the third floor. They have two: one on the fourth floor. and one on the third floor the fourth floor is given out only to visitors and on the third floor basically all the other celebrations that take place the feast and other meetings yeah. the members last comment for today maranita banerjee my dad my dad in the good old days of the dobitala food during the portuguese time she also mentioned that a passport was needed to travel to bombay Right.
I have to attend a wedding. Yes, to attend a wedding. <laughs> so, this is not super late. And we are grateful for all her time, all her insight, all her years of work put in. All these stories are not just uh, tidbit stories, but they are crucial pieces which help us understand uh, the Goa wider jigsaw puzzle migration, which has made so much of a difference to us, the money order economy. And, uh, you know, Renita Baneto and others are thanking you for all the work you have done. And also for today's presentation. Thanks, Doctor. Thanks so much. Uh, would you, before you go, would you just like to share your contacts in the chat box for anyone who, who would like to, uh, who would like to, you know, stay in touch with you? And while Dr. Dr. Aida is typing, I'll also say that we have a lot of interesting people showing up here. Mirena, Martin. Thanks to you also, Rovina. It might be middle of the night or maybe early morning, I don't know. But thanks to you and the others to Anjali, Renita, many others still. So some contacts, Nine, yeah, some contacts to contact Dr. Aida, she'll share her contacts there. Uh, yeah. Milena Zacharai has just walked in uh, and she runs Radio Mango in Toronto, which is a company radio station of Goans and Mangalorians. I think uh, she has interviewed Dr. Aida or something of that sort. So a lot of friends and fans of your work there. So thanks everyone. Once, once, we, uh, once we get Dr. Aida's contacts, you also free to, feel free to to network with her, to understand more about the issue, to share in your information with her. She has plans to do postdoctoral research, but it's 8.30, and I promise that we we'll let her go by 8.15. So thank As you. for my postdoctoral research on only one food I will be doing. <laughs> there is my contact number. If you would like to appreciate, criticize, ask questions, you may do so. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you everyone for coming. Good night. Thanks everyone. God bless you. May we meet again very soon. Bye. The talk will be recorded on YouTube and just search for Collaborative Learning Cafe. You will find the full record there. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye, Dr. Frederick. Thank you. See you everyone. Bye.